Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Here is uh, a GM's uh, latest hydrogen fuel cell car. It's the GM Hydrogen 4. Uh, the Hydrogen 4 is, uh, runs, as I said, on, with a, on a fuel cell. Um, and what happens with a fuel cell is that you take hydrogen out of the uh, tank of the vehicle. You combine hydrogen with oxygen from air in the fuel cell and you produce electricity with which you drive an electric motor that propels the wheels. And the advantage is that the only exhaust of this vehicle is pure water vapor. This is the only uh, product of the reaction taking place in the fuel cell as such. So this is the fourth generation. We started development in the late 90s, 1997. And uh, from one, coming from one generation to the next one, we improved more and more uh, our uh, fuel, uh, fuel cell system. Uh, what differs in the Hydrogen 4 relative to the Hydrogen 3 is that we uh, improve much the dynamics of the vehicle. So that vehicle not only comprises a fuel cell, but also a battery. So uh, this enables us to do a better performance, better acceleration, but also we can use the uh, uh, degenerating energy or braking energy to, uh, to uh, recharge the battery, which improves the range of the vehicle, or in other words, the efficiency of the car. Another aspect that is very uh, unique about this car is that we managed um, to uh, use this vehicle at uh, sub-zero temperatures since, as I said, uh, fuel cells produce uh, water in the reaction as the only emission of this vehicle. You know that water freezes below at sub-zero temperatures. So um, beforehand it had been a problem to operate these vehicles or to start, I should say, particularly these vehicles at sub-freezing temperatures. Um, through an uh, intelligent kind of operation strategy combined with improved uh, water management and heat management and heat insulation, we managed to have this car now being able to running and being operated uh, at uh, temperatures below zero, which is very unique, as I said. Uh, some, uh, some figures about this car. This car has a uh, uh, power of 73 kilowatts, which is equivalent to around about 100 uh, horsepower. The top speed is 160 kilometers per hour, or 100 miles per hour. Uh, and the acceleration from uh, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour or 0 to uh, um, 60 miles per hour is uh, about uh, 12 seconds. The car is a uh, four-seater, uh, which you can see if we look at the interior. You can see, by the way, if you look in the interior of the vehicle, then it uh, looks uh, very similar to an ordinary vehicle, and this is also how it is to drive. There is only, as we say, one fixed transmission, so one gear to go from 0 to 160 to the top speed. So it is very similar to driving an automatic transmission vehicle. Um, another important issue is that this car, as I said, is refueled by hydrogen. This is done here. This car uses pressurized hydrogen, meaning that the hydrogen is at a level of up to 700 bar of pressure, 10,000 psi. In a scary. So can you tell us a bit about it, about the safety concerns there? Because I know when I think about me refueling something with that kind of power, that's kind of scary to me, being a layman and not knowing, you know, what the consequences could be. The point is that hydrogen is. Uh, uh, not less safe or safer as compared to uh, gasoline or diesel. It's another commodity with other properties and it has to be handled appropriately. So this car meets every uh, US federal motor vehicle safety standards. So we did a lot of crash tests, uh, fr several frontal, rear, side crash and so on. And what came out of all that is that it, uh, it uh, sticks to the safety standards that we have 
for all the vehicles that we deploy in the US. And by the way, I mean, ourselves are also driving those vehicles, so of course they are safe, and that has been a, a very important development goal from the very beginning. Um, uh, when it comes to, um, to the refueling, it's very easy. It's uh, if you have tried already to refuel with compressed natural gas, this is very similar. It's a very similar process. Okay. It only takes three to five uh, minutes uh, to refuel this vehicle um, to get the uh, maximum of 4.2 kilograms of hydrogen into the tank of this car. So I don't need to know any of the properties of hydrogen to use this car. I can just plug it in and go, just like I put gas into my car now and go. It, exactly. Exactly. So refueling is easy as is driving. So driving is you have a key like an ordinary vehicle, you turn the key and then you can drive away. Um, the difference however compared to an ordinary car is this car is, it, it, it is very smooth, smooth driving because there is only this one gear from zero to the top speed so you don't realize any gear shifts. There's only one, this one gear and it is very very silent. This is also something that we improved um, coming from uh, hydrogen 4 um, to uh, coming from hydrogen 3 to hydrogen 4 is we um, we changed the uh, the air compressor. We had a so-called screw type uh, compressor in the previous model. Now we have a turbo uh, compressor, which is uh, on the one hand uh, more silent, on the other hand it's much more efficient, making this whole vehicle more efficient. Um, Relative to the, uh, the fuel, the 4.2 kilograms uh, uh, are enough to cover around about uh, 300 uh, kilometers. So it, of course, it depends on the driving cycle you use, but this is also an improvement relative to the predecessor. And if you look into the interior, I can also show you that although, as you know, this technology is, is, is still a very unique, very new technology, since the world started uh, roughly 10 years ago to develop this technology. It's still, it's still a new technology, but it, it is already at a stage where it, where you don't, where you have no compromise relative to comfort and safety. And if I talk about comfort, you can see this here is the only uh, intrusion into the trunk. Uh, so the trunk is nearly of the total size as the ordinary uh, Chevrolet Equinox model, which this car is based on. Where do you go and get, um, like we have so many gas stations everywhere, where yeah. do you go and get hydrogen? How many hydrogen stations yes. are there going to be in North America? Yeah. This is this is one of the of the uh, important uh, things when you talk about hydrogen. So what we talked about so far is the uh, is the technology, is the vehicle that in order to be able to later on sell those cars in the mass market, and this is our intention. We don't want to produce a niche product. It should be a mass market product. Uh, you name it, you have to have in place the uh, uh, complementary hydrogen refueling infrastructure. And this is um, why we are working together with other OEMs and together with energy companies and governments around the world to make this happen. So there are already uh, several uh, uh, refueling stations in the US, in, for example in California. Um, there are also like two stations in Berlin, which is the place where we want to deploy 10 of those vehicles. I should mention that, uh, that we will manufacture more than 100 globally. And to put this into perspective, if you look at hydrogen 1 and 2, okay, should I just okay. wait? I got gotcha. you. Okay. <laughs> uh, from uh, if you look at hydrogen one and two, we only build one unit each. Hydrogen three, we build twenty, and now we build a hundred. And this is because uh, we go into a new uh, 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 direction now. Uh, we take, so to speak, the uh, uh, fuel cell cars, the hydrogen fuel cell cars, out of the labs, if you if you want. Uh, since these cars will be tested by ordinary customers uh, in the US mainly. And, and that means uh, this car which is called the Chevrolet Equinox fuel cell in the US, uh, people can already now apply for being a test driver of this vehicle on the Chevrolet uh, website, www.chevrolet.com. 
people can apply for becoming test drivers in those vehicles. Uh, we will deploy those vehicles in the US as well as in, in Germany for uh, round about uh, two to two and a half years and there we will get or we intend to get a lot of customer feedback about this technology. You know, so far we have had those cars, uh, the earlier versions, in limited use in demonstration programs um, with customers already, but uh, the step we are now taking is going to the general customer because, you know, there are several things to do until we get there. Until we get that means that when we can sell those cars in the mass market, is on the one hand it's the technology side. So we have to further improve the performance, further improve the durability, but also get down with the cost curve, because our goal is uh, to have those in the mass market, which means that you need to get down with the cost to a level of around 50 US dollars per kilowatt of power, which is comparable to. Uh, what you have in today's internal combustion engines, if you talk about cost. So this is more or less about uh, the part that we are playing in, in, in this whole story. But on the other hand, um, we need to have uh, the refueling stations in place. Uh, and thirdly, we have to know if people will accept this technology. And this is what this program, which we call the Project Driveway, uh, uh, within GM, which this program is for. This is uh, the reason why we deploy those cars and let them test by ordinary customers. To get a feedback, how is it to drive a car, but moreover, how uh, important or how do you as a customer feel refueling this vehicle? Because it's not only R&D to be done on the car side, it's a lot of R&D to be done on the refueling side. We talked already about this 700 or 10,000 PSI compressed hydrogen. If you imagine you have only one, two, three cars passing by at a refueling station per day, that might be relatively easy to have the pressure level in place all the time. But if every several minutes a car passes by, then you also have to have the pumps and everything, the compressors uh, at the refueling stations work properly so that people can refuel, they can do a full refueling every several minutes. So this is just one example to underline how important it is to get uh, the technology providers, the oil companies running the refueling station, uh, to get them also there in doing R&D on their side so that we can do, we can go our pathway together, OEMs plus energy companies plus uh, the governments in the world uh, because we will need uh, now still for several years we will need the governmental support relative to funding this technology and the fuel to make this happen because in the end as you can see here uh, these are the exhaust pipes and there is nothing else but uh, water vapor coming out of those uh, exhausts so this is pure zero emission it is distilled water coming out of the exhaust pipe so the technology is, is working, it's, it, it works right now, but we need to get customer feedback and we get, get, need to get more and more the stakeholder involvement of these other groups I already mentioned. So how uh, efficient is hydrogen compared to other, let's say, alternative fuel sources, other than biodiesel or just yep. bio? This is a very good question. Um, what is important, if you look at any alternative to what we have today, and if you look uh, at the two pillars we are building this whole activity on, which are on the one hand side is energy diversity. This car runs on hydrogen, and hydrogen can be produced by a vast amount of various feedstocks, which means that you can do produce hydrogen in a different way wherever you are on this planet. Uh, and that makes us less dependent on oil, less dependent on the Middle East. This is the one pillar we are building on uh, relative to our activities, and the second one is is the uh, environmental friendliness of this technology. There are no greenhouse gas emissions in the vehicle. But let me come back to your point. Uh, if we compare this to, or if we compare any alternative with each other, we always have to do a kind of we call it integrated approach, which means that you not only look at 
uh, the vehicle, you also need to look at uh, how is the fuel produced uh, that you use in a car. Or to put it in other words, if we have a car that has zero emission, but you produce more CO2 by producing its fuel, uh, then Car you carbon have, footprint. Uh, th yes, then you will greenhouse gases. Uh, so then you would have on the whole chain from well to wheels in an ordinary vehicles, uh, vehicle, then you might ask where's the benefit. So what we did in GM, um, we started some years ago to do so-called well to wheel studies, considering production of a fuel, of an, any alternative fuel, and usage in the vehicle and combine this. And uh, we did uh, these studies for North America, for uh, Europe, and after that we also did in Europe a study together with all the other major OEMs and the oil company, companies to get all their input. And there is one major result of all those studies, although they might differ in some a small aspect is that hydrogen fuel cells offer the, uh, the, the, the greatest potential to finally reduce uh, greenhouse gas emission uh, uh, substantially and, and, and eventually to zero. Because if, as you know, this car has zero emission, and if you have the, the fuel, hydrogen, be produced by renewables like wind, like hydropower, like solar, geothermal, whatnot, then uh, also the production of the fuel is zero emission. And then on the whole uh, chain, well to wheels, you, are, you have zero emissions. The interesting thing, however, is because a fuel cell system in, in a vehicle like that is approximately twice as efficient as ordinary internal combustion engine, that means that this car uses the energy uh, twice as good as ordinary vehicles. You, or, in other words, you you need half the energy to travel a, 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 a specific distance as compared to ordinary vehicles. Means that even if you produce the hydrogen like it is done today from fossil fuels, so from natural gas, for example, this is how it is done in, in most of the cases today and it's 50 million tons that are produced per year hydrogen in the industry uh, if you produced hydrogen from natural gas and used it in a in a uh, fu hydrogen fuel cell vehicle then you are already uh, uh, around about 30 percent better on a well-to-wheel basis relative to the co2 emissions as you are in using internal combustion engines with diesel or gasoline today so this is very important because finally we need to get to the point where hydrogen is produced from the renewable energies. But importantly is that we cannot get there from one day to the next because the capacities have to be built up, the distribution system and whatnot. So for the for the intermediate time where we are still relying on hydrogen produced by natural gas, we can already be as I said, about 30% better relative to the well-to-wheel CO2 emission as we are today with today's, with today's internal combustion engine. That makes it so important for us that you use hydrogen in a fuel cell system rather than, which is also possible, using hydrogen in an internal combustion engine. Because then you don't have the advantages of the higher efficiency of the system in the car and then you would end up if you produce hydrogen from natural gas, using it in an internal combustion engine, you would end up being worse than what we have today. And then the question is, where is the benefit? But here, as I said, you can all already now be much better in uh, CO2 emission as compared to what we have on our roads today. So for us, clearly, hydrogen fuel cells is the future. Sign me up. Sorry? <laughs> <laughs> so it's, sign me up. I'll oh, sign up. I'll you, sign up. You, you sign up. Yeah, I'll no, sign up. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you.